Arbor Place, just outside of the Atlanta metropolitan region, may be one of the newer malls to the scene. On the surface, it appears to be doing well, but let's go for a walk and see for ourselves. This was recorded during the Mall Walkers Hour, so you're going to have to pay more attention to what's present and what's vacant. The year is 1999, and you walk into the freshly opened Arbor Place Mall. Developed by CBL and Associates, the mall would feature premier department stores like Sears, Parisian, an original Dillard's, and a vacant building. Wait. Okay, that building was supposed to be Upton's. But the chain experienced financial problems and was unable to open in their new store. But management did get on top of this and would secure a home improvement store known as Decor, with a K, as a temporary replacement in 2000, before JCPenney took up long-term residence in 2003. Despite this misstart, this did not slow them all down as it rose in popularity with its upscale offerings to the Douglasville region. It would even host a two-floor junior anchor building that would host Bed Bath & Beyond on the lower level and an Old Navy on the upper floor. The mall even featured a massive 18-screen Regal Cinemas with stadium seating. The mall was also quite showy in its design, with an open ceiling complete with green trusses and one of the more lavishly designed food courts I have seen. We'll come back to that later. In 2004, Riches would open as the fifth and final primary anchor. At this time, Macy's already had the Riches chain and would set up the store as Rich Macy's before rebranding to just Macy's entirely in 2005. Meanwhile, Belk would come to acquire Envor Parisian in 2007, and Belk was happy to continue operations. However, by this point, the mall began to stagnate, and there were a number of factors at play throughout the mall's life. According to Sky City, this mall was built as a reaction to rapid growth of Atlanta, as the city grew in popularity and surrounding regions became suburban bedroom communities, Douglasville included. And to cut a long story short, this growth, alongside the mall, was met with fierce opposition. And by the late 2000s, demographics began to change, and while it might not be obvious, Arbor Place was competing with Greenbrier Mall, Cumberland Mall, the Shannon Mall, and the Cobb Town Center. Now, Arbor Place did win out in some cases, with Shannon Mall being nothing but a distant memory today, and the Greenbrier Mall facing problems with chain occupancy and perception. But the fact remains that this mall was rather scuffed during its lifespan so far. For what it's worth, nothing major happened at the mall across the 2010s besides a few tenant changes and closures here and there. But towards the end of 2019, Sears announced they would be closing 96 stores, which included their location at Arbor Place, and the store would close after liquidation sales in February 2020. JCPenney was also planning on closing their location at Arbor Place as they entered bankruptcy, but it was later confirmed that their location at Arbor Place would remain open after CBL negotiated leasing terms with the store. So JCPenney is still here. For now at least. The hits kept coming in the beginning of the terrible 20s, as Bed Bath & Beyond announced their intention to close 63 stores, of which included Arbor Place. And right now, Bed Bath & Beyond seems like they're, well, Bed Bath & Beyond screwed. But as a silver lining, 
Just after my arrival to the mall, it was announced that in August 2022, Khan's Home Plus would partially lease the vacant Sears space. It appears there's still some fight left in this mall after all. Today, life goes on for the Arbor Place. However, its owners are less fortunate, as Cbion Associates remains in bankruptcy thanks to 2020. Additionally, the future is not bright for Atlanta, as the city itself suffers from riots, stagnating growth, and while overall crime is an issue, perceptions make it seem far worse than what the statistics say. While Arbor Place remains in good shape for now, it might be worth watching them all to see how it's affected by Atlanta itself, as the city is expected to begin shrinking in population after a couple more years. I gotta say, Arbor Place is certainly a looker. The carpet on the upper floor is kinda weak, and I wish the mall did have a fountain to show off. But there is a lot of green at play here to contrast against the white and black all across this mall. I like it when a mall is at least trying to look presentable and distinctive, and this mall certainly pulled it off. Aside from the food court, it has a way of looking elegant without looking soulless or excessive. Now. The excess does break out in the food court and the theater, but the rest of the mall is tame by comparison, and it's almost calming in a way. Although I'm sure that calming feeling is more because I came in during the mall walker's hour. But still, I approve. Okay, I'll acknowledge it. You are seeing some vacancies crop up here and there in the mall. It's not too bad yet, but you can tell there is a bit of a rot starting to form. And with CBL in the shape it is right now, I'm wondering what's going to happen to this mall. Cons moving into Sears is a good start, but you need more to keep this mall viable. One thing I have noticed is that retail is rather saturated in the area. Not in the form of malls or even lifestyle centers, but more in the form of big box stores and strip malls. To put this into perspective, there are three Walmarts just 15 minutes away from the mall, and with it comes the usual Lowe's or Home Depot, At Home, Kohl's, and Burlington, etc. The odds are stacked up against this mall, which brings us to the age-old question. How do you keep a mall on its feet? And if you live in the area, what do you want with this mall? Or do you still hold some animosity against the mall from 2000? Alright, I've held off long enough. You saw the theater earlier, now the food court. Now, since there aren't many people here at the moment, we can get a quick look around. And I'm sure you can tell this is where all the excess and gaudiness is in the mall. I personally like it, and the color scheme isn't too harsh on the eyes, but man, it's hard to exactly describe. All I know is that you would be hard pressed to find anything even close to this. And if this were renovated for a modern era, I imagine it'd just be bare minimum supports, all painted white with all white tile, maybe gray if borders if you're lucky, and any pillars present, if they don't get painted white, they might get painted some nasty bright orange that clashes in a bad way. Seriously, I actually saw that at a renovated Mills Mall. Nasty. And to round things off, let's go for a quick ride in the elevator.
Look at that moron. He acts like he's never seen an elevator in his life. And that concludes our tour of the Arbor Place. When I first saw pictures of this mall, I decided to prioritize it since it looked pretty cool. And I am glad I did. This place looked awesome, and its offerings don't look too bad either. As for its future, however, we'll have to wait and see. Is this the calm before a terrible metaphorical storm, or is the dream still alive? What do you think? Do share your thoughts down in the comments below. Thanks for having me, Douglasville, Georgia, and until next time, this is Doomy Grunt wishing you and the Arbor Place farewell and good luck in the raging storm. Okay, for anybody who owns a Nissan Z series, how is it that you have 400 horsepower, better handling, and the car still sounds like a piece of crap Honda from the ghetto?